So let's talk about how we actually engineer our systems and develop them. Yes, you could develop them texturally, but most often we like to construct them and communicate about them and analyze them graphically. So what we wanna talk about is how do we draw with meaning, semantic meaning? I'm gonna use the example here of a simple coffee maker, a coffee maker where I wanna add water and beans, and as a result, I want to get a fresh brewed pot of coffee. So what I'm going to do in Genesis, I'm going to select the home because I wanna create a new project for this. So after selecting home in the Project Explorer panel, I'm gonna select new project. I'm going to call this coffee maker. Now, when we create a project, we specify its schema and there are two primary variants in Genesis a base schema, which allows you to move from requirements to solution. And then what's called the architecture development schema, which also allows you to work in the operational architecture or the mission engineering space. This capability architecture development schema includes all the concepts in the base schema. So it's our operational architecture plus system development. We're just gonna do system development here, base schema is fine. I'm gonna leave the other settings, hit okay. This gives me a fresh project, a fresh namespace, if you will, for my coffee maker. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm gonna change a couple default preferences. So we have not talked about preferences. Preferences are available under the application menu, the G. If we select there and ask for preferences, we will see two classes of preferences that you can set. There are the user preferences that affect how you interact with Genesis. General things such as spell check as you type. Also, what diagrams do you like to use because you can toggle them on or off if there's a subset that you never use. What I'm going to do here is deal with the project preferences. This is where I could set things like the general node template that I would want on an activity diagram or an internal block diagram. I'm actually just gonna select general right below diagrams and I'm going to toggle off my frame footer. Just cleans up my diagram a little bit. I'm not using that information. Now from there, we'll see that an empty project in Genesis is not 100% empty. It begins with a component. Think of the component as your universal context or if you're a painter, Think of it as your canvas. This is where you begin your drawing exercise to visually construct your model. So I'm going to select the system context. Now I could pick any view that I want. I could start to do this compositionally through a block definition diagram. I could do it with a traditional notation in a physical block diagram. I'm going to simply select the flow internal block diagram. It starts out empty because my universe has nothing in it. Okay, what does our universe have in it? This is my drawing palette on the right. And so I have two options. I have new something, or I have just the something itself, new child or children. New child is the building block that you use if the entity does not already exist in your database. If you're reusing something that you've already created, then I would use children but my context is made up of my system of interest, the coffee maker, and then the externals I connect to. So I can simply drag new child on and visually construct, and I'm gonna call my first one coffee maker. The moment I do that, it shows up on the screen, it shows up on the list as a new component. I know my coffee maker is going to interact with things. So I'm going to drag, now where I drop is where the entity is gonna be located. This is a freeform diagram. I'm going to drop it and I'm gonna call this user. And I may go ahead and align it. I'm kind of an engineer, so I like things laid out in a, in a clean format. And I'm gonna do this one more time because my coffee maker needs to be plugged into something. It's not very good without electricity. So I'm gonna drop that on this side, kind of an infrastructure side, and I'm gonna call it electrical infrastructure. Okay. Now, once that pops up, 
the internal block diagram is a connectivity diagram. So it shows us our universe is made up of our system of interest and two externals, but how are these connected? Well, when you're talking about connecting things graphically in Genesis, again, you can do it two different ways. Most times you will have a connection type icon up in the ribbon. So let me talk about how my coffee maker is connected to the user. I'm gonna select coffee maker. I'm going to shift click user. The moment I do that, I have an option to connect nodes. So I'm gonna select that option to connect nodes. No existing connections have been created. So I'm going to create a new one. And this is a very abstract concept. So I'm just gonna call it my user connection. I, I'll characterize it later at a lower level of design. So I've got that characterized, but I also need a connection back to my electrical infrastructure. I'm gonna do that a different way. Again, you can visually construct using the palette almost anything you want to. So this time I'm going to drag a new connection onto my system and I'm going to label this my power connection. Now I've added a connection that is just a free floating wire I can now select it, hold down the control key for a relationship type move, drag over electrical infrastructure and release, and it will link it up. So now I've got my relationship with my two externals. If you were doing a context diagram, you would wanna go one step further, and you would wanna say what you're exchanging with those externals. Well, you'll notice that I don't have the ability to put those exchange objects. That's not actually a main building block of this diagram, but it's something that we can display. That's where this fourth icon, the display all entities folder comes in. If we select display all entities, we exchange items with the externals. So I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna find item in my list. I have none, but I can create them right here. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click item and it's going to give me a chance to create. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create water because I need to add water to the coffee pot. I'm going to do the same thing, double click item to create uh, coffee beans. If I think about what I get back from the coffee maker, it's brewed coffee. So I will add that. And just to show that you can do things multiple ways, I'm gonna come down my entity list. If you're a context ribbon, uh, sorry, if you're a context menu person, right click, new entity, and I'm going to create electricity. So anywhere that I've got a list, I can create those entities. Now I just need to relate them. So I can click on electricity, I click off. Now I'm gonna click and hold for a beat to set it and I can drag on to what I want to relate to. An item is transferred by a link. Genesis tells me this is the only valid relationship. I select it, there it pops up. I could do the same thing, select water, drag drop over on my user connection, transferred by, and I'm lazy, I'm actually going to do a shift click for brewed coffee and coffee beans, click hold, drag drop, and now I've created this relationship. I probably wanna size this a little bit better so it's not overlapping. I could move my nodes around. In fact, I think I will a little bit. And there we go. So what I've done quickly is I've put together an internal block diagram, your context diagram. Let's look at this information another way. So I'm gonna look at the block definition diagram, which is a pure composition diagram. It shows me my universe is built up of my system of interest and two externals. I'm gonna clean this up because we're not gonna be looking at operations and values, not at a high level. So I can se select the properties tab and change my template to, I'm gonna select just number and name. So now I see what these are. Now, I may have a design and in inspiration here and decide I want a slightly higher grade coffee maker. I don't wanna actually pour water in every time. I wanna hook it up to the plumbing. Okay, I could flip back and change it or I could change it here. Again, the concept is now new part because it doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to add new part, drag drop it onto its parent, the system context. And now I've got 
water infrastructure. Okay, so now my system, my global environment is made up of my system of interest and three externals. If I was a little further along, I could continue to build this up, now drag a new part onto my coffee maker to say what it's composed of. I know it will be made up of a grinder and it will be made up of a heating element. And I will stop there, but you could keep going. But I do want to go back and now I want to adjust my internal block diagram because I've actually made some changes. So if I go back to my flow internal block diagram, well, I've got my water infrastructure out here. That's good, but how's it connected? I'm going to clean up my diagram a little bit, put my infrastructure on the right, and I'm size this up a little bit. Now, as I size, you'll notice these lines moved and it's because their connection point was at the center of the node. So what can I do? Well, for this line, I'm gonna keep this node down where it is. I'm just gonna select that line and select the connection point and I can pull it straight down and it'll straighten out and lock up. In this case, I'm gonna to choose to center the user on the node and it'll straighten its line up. Now, I wanna create a relationship. I wanna create the link between the coffee maker and the water infrastructure. Again, if it's a connection, there's probably a shortcut on the ribbon to connect. So I'm going to select coffee maker, shift click water infrastructure, connect nodes. Now I need a new connection here. I'm going to call mine plumbing connection. I've got that set up. Now I need to define the exchange. And actually I need to do two things. The water is no longer going to be provided by the user. So how can I clear this out? A shortcut in Genesis is double clicking on the thing opens its property sheet. So I don't have to go back to the project explorer. I can just double click anything anywhere and I'm gonna get the property sheet. So double clicking here, I would be opening a property sheet on the connection on the link. And so if I do that, I no longer want it to transfer the water. If I deleted, I would be removing from the database. I don't want to do that. I just want to remove this from this list. I'm going to remove the target there. And you'll see it's no longer in our list. Size that up. But I need to add it over here. One final time, I'm going to go to our All Entities folder. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find that item list. I'm going to select water, click, hold, drag onto the connection, transferred by and now I've got it set up. One more thing, double clicking is a shortcut for opening a property sheet. If you're on a diagram and you hold down the control key, control double click is a shortcut for opening the same type of diagram on the entity that you're double clicking. Think of it on an IBD as diving into the next level of detail. So if I wanted to look inside my coffee maker, I could hold down the control key, double click, and I would see an IBD at that level, and I could continue the engineering. 